Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick, plus a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with a CFB 25 Dynasty video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the best coaching archetype to choose in the game. But before I do get into the video, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. As always, make sure to follow me down below on Twitter and TikTok. I'll be posting some short form content versions of this over there, as well as communicating over on Twitter for any advice or questions you may need. So when starting your dynasty, you do have the option between create new or current coach. Now, what I've pretty much gotten is that current coach is kind of a representation of your prestige slash representation of your real life coach. So Terrence Hightop is supposed to emulate Brian Kelly. While it is super OP to start with one in a lot of online leagues, you probably aren't going to get the ability to start with one. A lot of people are probably going with customs, which is what I would recommend to make it a little more fair. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to create a new one. And as you see here, there are three that you can choose from. So we have the three archetypes right here. We have motivator, which boosts your ratings and composure. There's recruiter, which in my eyes is the essence of college football. This is to be the best recruiter you can be when it comes to bringing in new players to your program. And then there's tacticians, which boost your ratings on game day. Now, in my eyes, tactician is basically what Madden 24 was. Play rec up, awareness up, throw power, speed, zone, man. This gives you those game day ratings. So just for a quick breakdown before I do get into it, in my eyes, how I see this, tacticians pretty much when you have, let's say, your Bama, your Georgia, your LSU, you're ready to win season one. I could see a world where tactician has some benefit because you may just want to boost your top tier players up even a bit more, get your freshmen ready, get your seniors ready, your juniors, etc. I see a world where that works, but in my eyes, that's just to play well in the game. I think at the end of the day, building your program is a little more important. And then there's motivator where this is interesting because motivator does actually allow you to build up ratings and improve players quicker. So here's where the caveat comes, right? Recruiter allows you to get in more five stars, four stars, three stars, and two stars per se, depending on what prestige program you are. It gives you boost in that. It allows you to compete with some higher tier programs that may not have recruiting aspects. But the caveat to that is once they're on your, once they're in your program and you have them, you don't have to build them. You now need to get the 77 overall freshman up to an 85, up to a 90 over the seasons, and motivator is where you do that. So this is where the next thing comes into play. I'm going to go into how which one I would choose and what route, but there are some other caveats here. So for me personally, I think you have to go recruiter. Whether or not you're a top tier program or a low tier program, if you're a top tier, you want to keep pumping in those recruits. You want to keep your program top tier, grabbing the best players, not letting anyone compete with you. And then vice versa, if you're a bad program, like a one star, two star, three star, you want to be able to compete for those four stars or those five stars or those high gem three stars. And the only way you can do that is by having the recruiter package. It goes a long way. Building your program is the essence of college football. If you have a great year one, but you fall behind in recruiting, it's not going to help. You got to be able to compete every year in recruiting. That's practically a separate part of the game. Like there's winning, there's playing, and then there's building up your program with new recruits. So I went ahead and chose recruiter. Now, once you are in here, you want to go over to coach and you want to go to coach abilities. Here's where you're going to be able to see your trees and kind of what you chose. So see in the middle, the middle red is where you start. As you can see, it's pointed towards the recruiter side, which is the red right here. You can see we have town developer, motivator, architect, tactician, and strategy. So if you see, these are the first three you can start with, recruiter, motivator, and tactician. Now what's key to note here is that while those are the main three, there are subcategories in between and they will play a role in what you choose. So if you do choose recruiter, you will want to get some from strategist and or talent developer, etc. So it's not like you're locked in. It's not like once you pick one, you're locked. I will say though, this is very, very important. You only get a limited amount of points from level one through 50 as a coach. You do not want to be just tossing them everywhere. I cannot stress that enough. There's no such thing as respecting your tree. There is no restarting your coach outside of retiring him and coming back in. And if you're in an online league with a bunch of other guys, you may not be allowed to just retire and restart, etc. So I wouldn't play around with that. I think it's so important that you go ahead and think this through. You can click on them that you have unlocked. So recruiter, we have unlocked now. I'm going to make a more in-depth video at some point in the next week or so going over the best ones, I think, in each group, how I think you should tie them and pair them. I'm going to briefly touch on it in this video, but I got to do a little more research on that aspect of the best way to allocate your points. But keep in mind, every level you get points, at level 50, you're pretty much maxed out. So do not go ahead and just start throwing them everywhere. So when you go in here, you can see you have the reason I go recruiter is because if you look at this advanced look QB running back, and it pretty much goes all the way through every single position group. So you see the advanced look here. The importance here is if you get advanced look for QB tier one, it takes less time to fully scout. 
That's important because you could use less recruiting hours and scouting and more recruiting hours on recruiting. This is going to go ahead and make your recruiting actions have bigger impact. So let's say you go all in on a player and you would have got it. You would have gotten like four arrows. You would have gotten X amount of growth on that player. Now you're getting slightly more, which goes a long way at first when you're a top tier program and you're already ahead of everyone else. And especially when you're a lower tier program, you need to catch up and or stay in the race. Always be recruiting increases weekly recruiting hours for QBs. That is huge too, because instead of putting a max of 50 on them, you can now put a max of 55, 60, et cetera. And then magnetic personality increased starting interest. So that means when recruiting opens up week one, you'll see that a program that has this will have a slight bump over other programs. So let's just say you would have had a small bar. You have a slightly bigger bar. If you had a huge lead, you now would have an even bigger lead. And that's very important. So like I said, moving on. I will make a more in-depth video going over through all this and going through what I would choose and how I'm going to build my program. But to give you some more insight on coaching, remember, while you do want to max your recruiter out since you are going the recruiting route, there are a few things you do want to do in tandem. So if you go over here, strategist, if you click onto here, this is how you get better boost for complimentary visits and bigger impacts for your visits and interests of players that come. So you do want to go ahead and also get this. And this is where it gets very specific with using only the amount of points you need. So to unlock strategies, you'll have to win four bowl games. So that, of course, could take some time. And that's the other thing with this coaching thing is that it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So just because you're saving points in year one, you may need to save them for year three when you have all your stuff opened up. So definitely play the long game, sit there with a pen and paper, break down everything you plan on doing with your coach very, very slowly so that you don't go ahead and shoot the gun now and then end up regretting it season three. Now you're kind of stuck with this dynasty, especially more so on an online than an offline. But as I said, you got to win four bowl games, spend 25 in tactician and 25 in recruiter. So first spend 25 in recruiter. Then you want to go ahead and unlock tactician for 10 points. That's a pretty hefty amount right there too. As you see, we don't even have enough with a brand new coach. And then once you have that, you come back over to strategist and here's where you can actually go ahead and add some stuff. So complimentary visits for QBs. That means when you bring a QB in and potentially bring a wide receiver and you get that complimentary bonus, you definitely want to have that. And if you, you can also go deeper than that. It really depends on what you're looking for, but visits have a bigger impact on QB prospects. So if you bring them in against Bama and it's a big boost, you'll get an even bigger boost. Then you have bonus interest for every visit a QB has taken before visiting you and increased chance to learn dev trait. That's the mind reader trait, which allows you to learn their dev trait before you actually commit them. Very important as well. So Overall, to break it all down, as you see at the top, there's program builder and CEO that applies to everything. So no matter which route you go, you can always get up there. It's very, very hard to get all the way to CEO, especially in an online league. But what we're focusing on today is the way to go. So again, my advice, go recruiter. That's the best way to go. You can click onto these at some point too as well. And you can look at what else they have, but nothing beats recruiter in my eyes. You want to be bringing in top tier talent. If you bring in top tier talent, you'll win. And quite honestly, winning and bringing in top tier talent consistently and following deal breakers is the key to this game. If you can just stay ahead like that with a good program, it's going to be very hard for you to fall behind. Another key part of this is that you do have coordinators. You do have defensive coordinators. You do have offensive coordinators. You do have their own trees. So you may have a coordinator like John Boudreaux who has motivator ready for you. You may have a guy that has tactician already established here for you or architect established here for you. Remember, they do stack. So if you have a, three guys while recruiting, you do stack bonuses. If you have three guys that do all different things, you get like the jack of all trades, but you're not going to be as top tier as a team that may have all three. So it's very program specific. If you're a one star, you need to definitely win, but you definitely need to be bringing talent. If you're Bama and you have great coordinators who recruit, maybe you want the bonuses. It's really all up to you. Again, guys, if you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Over there on Twitter, I can answer your questions more in depth, especially when you have very specific questions. We can go back and forth on that. So just let me know if you have anything. Uh, and yeah, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to always like the video. It helps out a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.